Hey guys, welcome back to another Spinosaurus Roars video, the video series in which I answer you guys' questions that you post in my Discord server. So, the first question I have here, I know this video, by the way, has been a bit delayed. I am going to try to do them every month, but it's been about a month and a half since I did the first one and uploaded it right at the beginning of February, but anyway, moving right along, the first question I have is, what head tracking software do you use or recommend? And I actually use View Tracker, which is a program that I purchased on Steam, and it seems to work pretty well. It uh, just use it as a webcam to track my head movements. There is also, I believe it's called Facetrack No IR, which I've never tried, but I hear it is also really good. And in addition to using a webcam, Facetrack No IR is actually free. I didn't actually know about it when I purchased View Tracker, so live and learn, I guess. The next question I have is how long, how much work does it take to create? content for your YouTube channel. Well, that really depends. Sometimes it takes multiple takes to get a video right. Uh, anywhere from one to two hours most likely. Apologies for the background noise there. So the next question I have is what video editing software do you use? Well, I use the free version of VSDC Video Editor just because I uh, found it online and downloaded it and started playing around with it and decided I liked it. I've never really had much of a need for anything more than what it does for me. Of course my video editing abilities are not particularly fantastic anyway. So. The next question I have is whether I prefer fixed wing aircraft or helicopters, and I, I'm honestly not sure. I definitely like the fact that fixed wing aircraft are so much simpler to fly. There is a lot of um, stuff you have to be careful of with things like stalling certain aircraft, in particular planes like the F-104, the Su-25T, and the A-10. But that uh, more than, or that is more than made up for by the fact that you don't have to keep your hands on the controls for the most part at all times, unlike a helicopter where you absolutely do. The next question I have is can you do tutorials on the mission editor? Well, my mission editor experience is not, well, or my mission editor skills, I should say, they're not particularly robust, but I can get the mission editor to do pretty much anything that I want it to do for the most part. Absolutely, I can do mission editor tutorials on what I know anyway about it. The next question I have is, AAR or sling loading, which is more difficult in your opinion? Well, I've never actually tried sling loading. I have tried air-to-air -air refueling, and that is a nightmare. Ugh. I hear it is better if you have an actual HOTAS set with a throttle so that you have more minute control over your engine inputs. But aside from that, it, it's... I really can't say one way or the other on that because I've only ever tried one of them. The next question I have is how did you get your call sign Spino? And for that we're gonna have to take a quick look back at the Jurassic Park movie franchise. Well it, there's actually a lot more to it now than just movies and has been for many years but the uh, main big dinosaur in the third movie, Jurassic Park 3, was the Spinosaurus, and it... I... 
had a hard time with a lot of the stuff in the movie, just, in, just uh, liking it in general, but the Spinosaurus, or at least the way it looked, was one thing I did like. It looked pretty cool to me, and I uh, kind of carried that over when I decided to start my own YouTube channel. And... So yeah, that's pretty much where that came from. The next question I have is where did you get the Spino livery for your in-game helmet, or livery I should say? Well, <laughs> that is actually something I made myself. I am not completely incapable of making stuff myself for DCS World, so I uh, downloaded the GNU image manipulation program, which is kind of like Photoshop for free or something like that, and learned how to use it to the point where I could um, make my own custom skin for the F-14 flight helmet. I've never played around with it enough to do custom skins for any of the other helmets for any of the other aircraft that I own in DCS, but I uh, figured I'd like to have it for the F-14, and honestly I think it turned out pretty well, so that's where that came from. The next question I have is Altitude. Top Gun versus The Final Countdown and Greyhound versus The Hunt for Red October. If you had to pick one of each, which movie would it be? Oh. You're. This is honestly putting me in a bit of a hard place because I. I can't speak really for. The Final Countdown or Greyhound too much because I've only ever seen the uh, just random clips of them here and there on YouTube. I have seen Top Gun and The Hunt for Red October and pull up, pull up. oh gosh, well, altitude, altitude. I don't know that I really have a verdict on that. To be honest, just because I haven't seen two of the movies in question. So the next question I have is, what was the first flight sim you played? Well, that's easy. Flight Simulator 2002, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2002. So that came along, well, for me, several years ago. Of course, it's. Uh, been out for many more years than that, but several years ago I uh, got my hands on that and it was light enough that it would run on the computer hardware that I had at the time and I had a lot of fun with it and then eventually I moved on from there to Combat Flight Sim 3 and Flight Sim Emulator 10 and eventually I got into DCS and then started my own YouTube channel and of course that leaves us where we are right now. So the next question I have is where do you research or source the info that you provide in your videos? Well it depends on the video topic but generally I uh, I honestly have been into aircraft and ships and submarines, in particular military aircraft, ships and submarines, ever since, well, I don't even remember how far back it's been so long, but to, I've been interested in them to the point that I, uh, I've read a lot about them over the years, and I supplement that with um, whatever I can find on the internet if there's something specific that I'm not sure about. Of course I uh, try to verify my sources as best I can, but um, for the most part, yeah, that's where I get my stuff from. So the next question is, other than DCS and Cold Waters, what other games do you play regularly? Well. I've dabbled here and there in War Thunder, but I uh, play World of Tanks and World of Warships here and there more regularly than anything else other than DCS and Cold Waters, and 
I find those mm, sometimes enjoyable, sometimes they're a little bit frustrating because, well, there's the whole game balance issues that both of those games have, but then again, a lot of them have that kind of thing. A lot of the massively multiplayer games, I believe, have a lot of, well, game balance issues. We'll just leave it at that. So yeah, that pretty much does it for the games that I play regularly other than DCS and Cold Waters. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.